In this video, I'm going to have a look at the system clock, its characteristics, and its effect on the performance of a computer system. The last video in the playlist looked at analog and digital signals. As you're looking at the screen, the waveform on the left is an example of an analog signal, and the one on the right is an example of a digital signal. Let's consider a digital signal. And here you can see I'm labeling it as clock pulses. And this is a typical use of a digital signal within a computer. These pulses synchronize the operations of the central processing unit and its supporting components. Let's consider how these pulses are generated within a computer. If you take an appropriate crystal and you apply a voltage to that crystal, an electrical signal is produced that is illustrated here. Now this electrical signal is an example of a sinusoidal waveform and is analog in nature. It is not an example of a digital signal because if you have a look as time goes on and then consider the amplitude of the signal, you can see that as you move along in time, the signal is getting bigger and it reaches a peak, it then begins to fall and it keeps on going up and down as you can see from the illustration. So it has numerous levels of amplitude and that's a definition for an analogue signal. Let's consider a feature of this analog sinusoidal waveform. I'm going to highlight a cycle of this waveform, and you can see that is here, shown in green. And that is a complete cycle. It'll now start to repeat, because the next cycle is shown here. And I'll just show one more example. That is the next cycle. And as you go along in time, you keep on getting repeats of this cycle of the waveform. You should note in the case of this waveform, each cycle is an identical copy of the previous cycle and the next cycle after the one that's highlighted in green, that will be an identical copy in terms of its shape and in terms of how long each cycle lasts for. By that I mean how long it will last for in time. The sine wave that you're seeing above will have a frequency. That will mean how frequently is there a cycle being generated in one second. In other words, how many cycles are there per second? One cycle in one second is said to be one hertz. Therefore, 10 cycles in one second is said to be 10 hertz. A million cycles in one second is an example of a frequency that is one megahertz. And we abbreviate hertz as shown here. A sinusoidal analog waveform, as illustrated on this slide, will not serve as a clock for a computer system. We need to convert this regular signal, this regular frequency signal, into a regular frequency square wave. And I'm going to show that on the next slide. Let's consider how we can change the sinusoidal waveform produced by the crystal into something that can be used within a computer as the system clock. We know if we apply a voltage to the crystal, then we're going to get it producing an output that is a sinusoidal wave. Now this is then used as an input to something frequently called a pulse generator. And when the crystal and the pulse generator are placed together in an electronic circuit, together they're referred to as a clock. Using this sinusoidal analog waveform as both its reference and input, the pulse generator will produce a digital square wave signal, as illustrated here. Consider this waveform against time, and also consider its amplitude. And what you can see is we don't have a continually changing amplitude, we have an amplitude that has two levels, a low level and a high level. In other words, we have a digital waveform. These regular digital signals are sent to all components in a computer to synchronize their actions. Let's just consider a characteristic of this 
square wave, this digital signal. And let's look at a typical cycle. And you can see here in green that I've marked out a cycle. You can see it starts at low, it goes up to high, it stays at high for a while, then it drops back down to low, and it continues to stay low until it gets to this point, at which point the cycle begins again, as I'm showing in green. And of course, the cycle after this one is shown here. So we can see, just as the sinusoidal waveform had cycles, so does this square wave, so does this digital waveform. The square wave will have a frequency, in the same way that a sinusoidal waveform had a frequency. One cycle in one second for a square wave is also one hertz. Ten cycles per second is a ten hertz square wave. A million cycles per second of a square wave is one megahertz. Let's consider the clock pulses that come from a clock within a computer system. And let's draw an analogy of the clock pulses and how they help make a computer work. Consider an orchestra. Now the orchestra will have a conductor with a baton and that baton will beat out a regular time for the orchestra to follow. And the baton will also inform various sections of the orchestra when they are to start performing. Typically on a move of the baton, the wind section would start to play and they would follow the baton to ensure that they kept in sync with the flow of the music. Another movement of the baton would bring in the string section and the wind and the string section now would be looking at the same baton and would be following its movement. So the conductor is like the clock of the computer system. The computer system clock will synchronize the entire computer system, dictating things will happen at this regular beat. And on these beats of the clock, the computer will do something, and we'll have a look at what those things are in a moment. Let's take a closer look at these clock pulses. And what we can see, they're at regular intervals. Now, in digital electronics, which is driven by digital clocks, we need to consider where the leading edge of the pulse is. And the leading edge is shown here. It's where the signal goes from the low level to the high level, and it does this very rapidly. That's why it's referred to as an edge. You go from low to high, and theoretically there's nothing in between. You're low and then you're immediately high. This is one of the things that defines a digital signal. Another example of a leading edge is the next cycle of this clock pulse and we can see that is here and I'm labeling it as the leading edge. Let's consider the types of things that can happen when we have the leading edge of a clock being supplied to various components around the computer. We can for example on this leading edge move data to the accumulator. Now I'll not worry about where the data is moved from at this point in time but what we can say is if you want to move data to somewhere, it has to be done on this leading edge. What else can happen is we can have on this leading edge increment the content of the accumulator. So the accumulator, which by the way is a register inside the central processing unit, what a register is essentially a small amount of memory. Whatever is stored in that accumulator will be one bigger when this clock leading edge is applied. And how that happens, I'll not concern ourselves with at this moment in time. Needless to say, however, it will happen on a leading edge. Let's consider more realistic micro steps that are likely to be controlled by a system clock. Let's look at two leading edges here. And on the first leading edge, we can open a path, open a bus system, to allow things to move along it. On the next leading edge here, we move the data along that path, along that bus system that was opened on the previous clock cycle, on the previous leading edge. Of course, we know if we move along in time, we're going to get another leading edge. And on this leading edge, what we can do, we can close the pathway, we can close the path, we can close the bus system. So data is now no longer allowed to move along that data path. 
Let's return to look at the clock and the pulses being produced. And one of the things we can say in general is the faster the clock, the more instructions can be executed by the CPU in a given time. And when we say the faster the clock, what we mean is the higher the frequency of the clock, the more individual steps can be executed inside the computer system. And the previous slides have shown you some examples of that. Just to remind you, clock speed is measured in hertz, which is cycles per second. The more of these square waves we get per second, the higher the frequency. And it's usual to say the higher the clock frequency. But in fact, what we really should be saying is the clock is producing signals of a high frequency because it's the signal and the leading edge of these square waves that will dictate how many things will happen in a second inside a computer system. For example, a 3.5 gigahertz clock means that 3.5 billion pulses are produced in one second. So this means there will be 3.5 billion leading edges in one second. So the computer can actually perform 3.5 billion steps in one second. Now that's one heck of a lot of steps. And of course a 3.5 gigahertz clock is not one of the highest clock frequencies you can get. There are even higher clock speeds than this. So an important takeaway from this video is more pulses per second, i.e. higher frequency, means more instructions will be executed in a given time. So the frequency of the pulses produced by a clock does have an effect on the overall performance of the computer systems that you use. I would like to summarize this video with the following facts. Clock signals are digital signals. Clock pulses synchronize the central processing unit and its components. More instructions are executed as the clock frequency increases. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.